Base plates are elements at the bottom of the columns that transfer the load to the foundation level. Normally the columns transfer compression loads vertically, horizontal loads as a shear, and bending moments in one direction or in both directions. But how do you design the base plate and how do you design the anchorage to the supporting concrete member? This is Javier Encinas and today we're going to discuss the current method in the AISC to design base plates and also the philosophy for the design of anchor rods in the ACI 318. Let's get started. When the load in the column is just compression and is concentric, the resulting bearing stress is uniform under the base plate and the maximum bending moment is produced by the bearing stress acting in the cantilever portion of the base plate. When we add some small moments to the column, the resulting bearing stresses are no longer uniform. Now the distribution is uh, it's a trapeze, but still everything is in compression here. There's no tension in the anchor rods. So the maximum moment is also equal to the bearing pressure acting upwards in the cantilever portion of the base plate. But as we increase the moments in the column, the bearing pressure become partial. So a portion of the base plate is, in, uh, is no longer in compression and the anchor rods in, the, uh, in that area become active and they provide the tension for the static equilibrium in the compression and tension here. In this case the maximum moment in the plate is produced either by the bearing pressure acting in the cantilever portion of the base plate or by the tension in the anchor rod in the other side of the, of the plate. Once the maximum moment is known in the base plate we can calculate the thickness accordingly very easily. To illustrate the point, I have prepared an example in as deep steel. We have a base plate 18 by 18 that supports a column W10 by 54. It has six anchor rods. The loads are 100 kips in compression, 75 kip feet in uh, bending and 30 kips in, in shear. So the goal is to design the base plate thickness and also design the anchor rods. Graphically we can see the base plate here is 18 by 18, six anchor rods and these are the applied loads. The resulting bearing stresses are shown here and also the resulting tension in the, uh, in the anchor rods. If we go to, uh, to the contents tab, we can see here in the base plate with moment, we can see here two different theories, the budget model and also the AISC design guides number one philosophy. These are the main two theories in the design of base plate. I have prepared some charts to show the comparison between the two methods. In the first chart at the left, we are showing the base plate thickness versus the eccentricity. And in the second chart, we are showing the tension in the anchor rods versus eccentricity. As you can see here, the red line is the AISC method is uh, more conservative than the budget method. The difference between the two methods is that the, the budget uh, assumes that uh, the base plate is infinitely rigid, so the uh, compatibility is enforced in the analysis. As you can see in the blue line, this method shows results very consistent for uh, the, full, the full range of eccentricities, both in the plate thickness or uh, the anchor rod uh, uh, tension. Unlike the blood method, the AISC is more conservative and very close to, to the kern. The kern is L over 6. And for larger centricities, basically the, the two methods give the same, the same results for both. Back to the example, we have here the calculations of both methods for uh, budget and for AISC. We can see here that the moment due to the bearing pressure is 10.5 and the moment due to the rod tension is 4.5. So 
the controlling moment is 10.5 and the plate thickness is calculated accordingly as 1.14 inches. If we go with the AISC method, it's more conservative and the moment at the critical section due to the bearing pressure is 14.7, which is larger than the, the blood jet method result. And the moment due to the rotation is 2.2. The controlling is 14 and the resulting plate thickness is 135 versus 114. In the material staff, here we have the analysis method. If we select the blood jet model, which is enforcing the strain compatibility, we will obtain these results, 114 inches as a resulting thickness. But if we select the AISC method, then the 1.35 inches thick is, is the result of the analysis. Graphically, we can see the base plate and the uh, resulting uh, bedding pressure and tension in the anchor rods. This is for, for the blood jet method. And if we select the AISC, the results change accordingly. In this case, we are selecting the blood jet method. So the required thickness in this example is 114 inches say one and a quarter inch uh, thick plate. In addition to illustrate the anchorage design, the ACI 318 provides the methodology to design the anchor rods in a base plate. Basically the philosophy in the ACI is to design the anchor rods for tension and then design the anchor rods for shear and then check the, inter the interaction between the tension and shear. For anchor rods in tension, we need to check four limit states. One is the, the, the steel failure, which is the, the failure of the steel itself. The concrete breakout, which assumes a cone in the concrete surrounding the, the anchor rod. The pullout of the anchor in the concrete. And finally, the side face blowout. For anchors in shear, we need to check the following limit states. The steel failure, which is a failure of the steel itself, the anchor rod itself. The concrete breakout, which assumes a cone in shear for the anchor or a group of anchors in the concrete uh, support. And finally, the concrete pry out, which occurs in shallow uh, anchors in the direction opposite to, to the force. Going back to the example, in the tension analysis tab, we can specify here the embedment depth of the anchor rods, and we can also specify here anchor reinforcement in case that we want to put some rebars in the anchors to eliminate completely the breakout. In the shear analysis, also we can specify here how to take the shear. In this case, we are using anchor rods only, but we can also use friction only or a shear log if necessary. In this case, as an example, we are using anchor rods only. And we can also specify here the uh, anchor reinforcement if necessary, if we want to eliminate the breakout uh, failure at all. In this example, let's go to the contents tab. At the bottom of the page, we have the anchorage design section here. In the tension analysis, we can see here the total tension and the tension per rod. And here are the uh, limit states for tension. We can see here that in this particular example, the rebars are controlling the design because the, the ratio is 0.5, larger, for example, than the side blowout, which is 0.44. The controlling limit state is rebars strength. And that is because we, in tension, we applied some anchor reinforcement. If we eliminate completely the, the reinforcement in, in, in this example, then the rebars, no, you know, they don't apply and the breakout is controlling the design. In shear, in this case, the controlling limit state is the steel strength, which is the anchor rod itself. And finally, the combined uh, stress ratio, which is the interaction between tension and shear is 0.99. If we go back and add some rebars, then we can lower a little bit the, the total uh, ratio. With this, we complete the overview of the design of uh, base plate and anchor rods 
according to AISC and ACI 318. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel if you want to receive notification of similar videos in the future. Thank you very much for your attention.